Hello, we have with us this afternoon Professor K.C. Janardhan who really needs no introduction to the community. Hello, we have with us this afternoon Professor K.C. Janardhan who really needs no introduction to the community because he is a father figure to the handwriting, lettering, calligraphy, fountain pens, inks, writing instruments, paper, notebooks, this entire industry. And uh, when I say father figure, I say it consciously because here is one gentleman who has been fighting for the last many decades to popularize fountain pens and the art of writing. And not only so, you know, he is uh, himself someone who has fought epilepsy, someone who has fought total ignorance about writing and about uh, fountain pens and about handwriting, about calligraphy. He is one who has fought the uh, or who has helped create with his single-minded devotion this entire industry because when he started uh, I think even uh, deep pens were not available forget about uh, instruments that are specially uh, created for uh, calligraphers for writers wood pens were only of the imported kind inks were because you know we are talking about a time when the ballpoint pens were really coming into uh, the world with a, they were coming in like a tsunami and they were devouring everything on the way and uh, fountain pens were on their way out inks were given up for dead but here is a gentleman who more than all of us put together has put in more effort to bring this back to the state where we are in because we just went to uh, Gama and we were talking to Mr. Pratap Kumar and we've talked to so many other people, uh, stalwarts in the industry who are all so happy that young people are coming back and picking up the fountain pen and I think the uh, credit to a very great extent goes to you. Sir, uh, that was for the introduction and I'm, you know, that's the, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting things drastically because if one were to talk about him, then one would, would go on and on forever. But this one thing, sir, I want to know is, or rather, I want to ask you on behalf of all the viewers, is from where you stand with your kind of experience, with all the effort and all the years that you have spent in uh, creating the world as we know it today, how does it see? I mean, how, how does it look from your vantage point? Thank you, John. Well, I greet all the viewers who are watching this program. Chom has brought out some very relevant points. I really don't know whether I'm a father figure, but I am a figure <laughs> in this field who tried to do something from the late 80s. What was bothering me is when I started correcting the answer scripts of my students of MBA and MCOM, it was indecipherable. So the question was, why are they writing badly? I asked quite a few of my colleagues and said, shouldn't somebody fix this problem? And they said, that's not our problem, I say. It is to be done by the primary school teacher. So I went to the primary schools and asked them, what's happening here? One led to the other. I went to a lot of primary schools and found that the system of teaching handwriting was not right. And the teachers themselves did not know what was right from wrong. So this became very intriguing and interesting in the field of education. As Francis Bacon says, reading makes you a ready person. Writing an exact person and conversation a complete person. There's something missing. There are a lot of missing links. 
So to cut a long story short, one led to the other and then in the quest of finding out everything between A to Z, it led me from A to Z of the world, from America to New Zealand, to travel across the globe to visit schools, colleges, universities and corporates and find out why people write badly. It all started there. And in the early 80s, to tell you all, very frankly, not many people even knew the word called calligraphy. Not many people knew in this country. Late 80s, when I started doing my exploration and my own research work, I found something very interesting, that handwriting has got seven different areas. Handwriting at the basic level, what we learn in schools, could be in any language. Then comes the stylish kind of writing, which is called as lettering. Unfortunately, 99% of the world today claims lettering as calligraphy because they haven't gone to the higher level called calligraphy, which has a spiritual dimension. I don't want to go into greater details because it will take a longer time. So I found these three to be a first vertical which was progressive and complementary to each other. Then a central vertical came up during the early 90s graphology, which is to find out your character from your handwriting. But then it's only an indicator, 60 to 70 percent, not a hundred percent science. A break off a, a breakaway group was called as Graphonomy, who said we are even more accurate, but still questions are left unanswered. And graphotherapy, which will change your character, which will change your fate. This was like you know, claiming too much beyond what is really possible. It was not reality. Then came the seventh element which I call as a third vertical, which is rational, not like the central vertical, which is emotionally driven. This is into forensic sciences, where you try to find out whether a signature is forged or it is the same as the original author. Now, that is a scientific approach, which is a rational thing, and that is acceptable, even in the courts. But then this graphologist, whatever they give, are not to be accepted in the courts because in the courts because they are emotionally driven to analyze somebody's character. Whereas in forgery, we check the character of the signature, not the person. The intrinsic values are checked. So, you know, seven areas I found. Everything was very interesting. And the main thing was to make more people write better. That was my drive. More and more people, if they write better, they communicate better. How to make them write better? You need good pens. By the time I started off in late 80s and early 90s, as Chom said, the dark ages of the fountain pen started where fountain pens were used lesser and lesser and it was declining in usage. So ink companies also were disappearing. The ball pens took over the most dangerous writing instrument according to me. I call it as a scribbling instrument, a ball pen or a gel pen, which today all the teachers recommend it to the youngsters. It's very dangerous. A fountain pen, according to me, is the best ever writing instrument that was ever made. With a buttery feel when you write, with the right kind of flow of ink, and your thoughts also flow beautifully if you have a pen like that. So, I needed support from pen companies. Like if you are a cricketer, you need support from a bat manufacturing company, a ball manufacturing company, and all the other cricketing gear that's required. I didn't find good fountain pens in India. The ones that were available, which are imported, either Sheffers or Parker or one of them, were out of reach of the common man. They were very expensive. So the first pens that I tried to pick up from the local market in Bangalore, where I live, was one of those qualities. And you know, the acrylic was not of good quality and it was already turning yellow. And we were getting it at something like 30 rupees in the early 90s, which I gave it to my students. Then it has leaking problem, flow problem, all kinds of things. Then I tried Flare, I tried Shell Park, I tried quite a lot of local brands which were available, but every one of them had one problem or the other. Though it had to be tuned, we tried to find our own ways, like in India they call it as Jugad and play around. And I met every other pen company worth its name in this country and they could not support it. I didn't find good products coming out. So I wrote a book, I co-authored a book on handwriting in 1992 and uh, I went around asking these pen companies, would anybody be interested in sponsoring this? Everybody said, good, 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 you write a book, go ahead. Let's stop with that. 
But I got hold of one DK Jain of Laksa Pen Company who could understand this example of a cricketer, the bat manufacturer, the cricketer. So he underwrote about 10,000 copies and it sold all over the country. But unfortunately, this man didn't have a fountain pen and he had a pilot V something high tech pen. I said, Look, I'm not interested in promoting high tech pens. So there was a difference of opinion. Fountain pen is not available even with Luxa Pen Company, and so the partnership had to end there. Then I was on, you know, a trail of trying to find out who can support me, which pen company can support me, which ink company can support me, which paper company can support me, because we need it. So the constant effort of trying to talk to them, and then all over the world, I traveled. I gave enough seminars enough workshops, training programs to youngsters and many of them today are doctors, engineers, lawyers, architects or they are auditors or IT professionals, a lot of my students. Maybe I must have trained about a thousand plus of them for the long term programs but there have been you know almost a few lakhs across this world who have heard me, who have seen me and who have known something about it. I think it had some kind of an effect which I am seeing after 20 to 25 years and uh, somehow we survived the dark ages of the fountain pen trying to fight this ball pen and gel pen and then about five or six years ago it was in the mid 2015s or 16s that a renewed interest came up with the youngsters especially the ones who became IT professionals and then they, I think they were bored of the keyboards and they went back to dip and write pens. You know, in 80s and 90s when I was looking out for it, nothing was available in India. Even a decent fountain pen was not available in India. And today, because of the internet age, because of ordering online, Amazon, Flipkart, so many other people who deliver to our homes, a lot more youngsters had the access to this. We service late 80s, early 90s, we couldn't lay a hand on a book of calligraphy, nor the right kind of tools for calligraphy. We had to make do with whatever was available. And so we came up the hard way of creating the letters without much of the tools that you see today, that everybody carries a kit and has all kinds of uh, flashy tools. I'm glad many people have taken to handwriting, lettering and calligraphy but I'm not very sure how many of them are true calligraphers because the spiritual dimension is still missing in them. So I can say they are at the best good lettering experts be it in Italic or Spencerian or Zenarian or somebody has been practicing the American business hand or you know the American secretary's hand all of these variants of uh, Zenarian and uh, Spencerian and Palmer's from copper plates they all derived. So whatever they may be practicing, well and good, I'm happy that it's coming back and I've seen at least about a half a dozen pen shows in this country happening where a lot of people have taken interest in manufacturing pens, a lot of inks are coming up and I have one concern, though all this is happening, our Indian pen manufacturers have a long, long way to go as far as their quality is concerned and reliability is concerned. The flow of ink, the control of the flow of ink, the right kind of strokes that are being produced and especially if it's a flex nib, it needs to have a thick line in the downward stroke and when you take a turn and go up it must be a hairline stroke because the flow is too much sometimes you get that thick line at the curve also which is not really appreciable. So the instruments need to undergo a lot of change. No, I'm appreciating them for having forayed into it and at least come up to some level, but they need to go a few more miles to really perfect it like the international standards. That's when it will flourish. We are doing our best to get a lot of youngsters interested in writing. So to keep the habit of handwriting going on, you need the support of people who teach writing, like what I was doing for last 35 plus years teaching people how to write properly and then doing professional lettering 
and calligraphy with a spiritual dimension. When more and more people start getting into it and refining this art form and reaching the best levels, we need the support. Like we need a cricket ground to play cricket. We need the best kind of equipment. We need the right kind of paper, pen, ink, dip nibs. They're all coming up, it's happening. But my request is they need to really start, you know, uh, raising the bar. And they need to up the game to be there on the international levels. I'm glad that companies like Suleka have started coming back into manufacturing inks. And the way in which they have brought out various colors with dye-based inks, which are eco-friendly. And they made a very big difference to most of the other ink companies in this country. They just manufactured and put it into a bottle, put a label, so many ml, this price, bagera, bagera, and just put it in the market. But Suleka has gone many steps ahead of trying to bring in that Indianness, the patriotism, by celebrating certain icons of this country. When the factory was reopened about six, seven years ago, they got some drums of ink which were lying there for many years and it started working well. So they brought the Swadeshi series, which was a collector's item. Wonderful in a jute bag, Swadeshi. Then they brought the Swadin series, a blue, a black, a green and a red. And then comes the Swaraj series. Now, if you look at every box of this, it has something interesting written about why this ink, what does it signify and why should you use this ink. And that was interesting that an ink bottle or its carton had some interesting information and also driving a lot of patriotism into the Indians or the people who are outsiders also would want to understand what is this Indianism. And in Swaraj series, they had the uh, quote from uh, Balganga Bal Tilak, what Tilak said about freedom. And uh, they brought another series called the Samarpan series, which is uh, trying to, you know, they pay respects to respect. somebody for what they have done. There was an ink called Ma based on Mother Teresa and the blue black came from the cassock that was worn by Mother Teresa and there was another Selam ink which was blood red. It is just to say even how much of blood should happen during the war. No, no sir, this the, was about uh, 21st of February for the International Mother Tongue Day. Yeah, th for that which was Mother Tongue Day the Bengalis gave their uh, lives. So they are being celebrated and a more screening for the Mother Language Day. So they tried to commemorate a lot of things. I was interested in taking a look at if they can bring out something for Subhash Chandra Bose and Sardar Patel, people like that. They are working on that, you know, it's very difficult to get the, you know, Permission. rights and permissions from those who hold it. But then I am glad that the great painter called Jamini Roy, uh, I think one of his family members, granddaughter yes. or his great granddaughter, gave the permission. Jamini Roy, I believe, used to use seven different colours, natural colours to do all his paintings. Today it's a national treasure and nobody can sell it, that's what I understand. And so they have got the rights and permission, so they printed the paintings of Jamini Roy on the ink bottle and the carton, described about Jamini Roy and brought out seven different colors. Six different, oh, six different. white, one, oh, was one, white. one was white, so they didn't bring out white. And the white was uh, brought for some other uh, reason, I'll tell you, for some other uh, commemorative series. But Germany Roy's six colors brings out again the Indianness, the artist, natural colors, eco friendliness, all that is beautifully brought out. The packaging is wonderful and appreciated by a lot of people. And then they also had a very interesting uh, series called as Firangi Kali, which I have already uh, done another video, video earlier maybe I could we could give the linkage to that so that I don't need to repeat about uh, the whole thing about Fermi Kali but a very interesting story about pastel shades which the English lady wanted though it never happened it was continued and it was taken care of but this kind of you know bringing in a variety of uh, inks and uh, packaging them in a nice manner and trying to position them and market them for the patriotic Indians, today there is an upsurge coming up, you know, Indianness, make in India, 
Mera Bharat Mahan. So many slogans have been told, and uh, even India's name may be soon changed to Bharat. So everybody is looking towards Bharat of the yester years where we were popular for many many things. So I would want the ink companies to do a lot of innovation, bring in different kinds of inks, different colored inks, and the pen manufacturers should also start innovating. I find that most of them have ended up copying some of the popular models of uh, either a Montblanc cigar type pen or the Parker Duo Fold. So there are just few variations and they are all lookalikes of those kind of pens. Let them try and design something new and also which is uh, friendly for the hands to hold and write. Let them develop something interesting and better. I know it's only a 6 to 7 inch tube. You can't play around much, but then you can still do if you look at some of those foreign brands who have been working on it so well. So let them bring out some good quality and innovative pens. Then the market is going to be interesting. I'm glad a lot of youngsters have taken up to writing. They're coming back. And we are now actually sitting in a restaurant near the Chennai Pen Show that is happening right across. A lot of youngsters, a big crowd yesterday and today also a lot more footfalls are coming in i see this as like you know the resurrection of something where you know it's just coming back it's been taking the cities by storm it's like you know the floodgates are open but there are many skeptical people who asked me pen show oh who's buying pens today who's buying ink today but then you know they, you'd all be surprised that there are hundreds and hundreds and millions of people across the globe today who have taken up to fountain pen and the ink. So, it is a resurgence. We will coexist even if it's a digital age. And there's something very interesting. Even in the digital age, you need to ask the questions. Why with an iPad you're given a pencil? Why with a Samsung phone you have a stylus? What I said 40 years ago, I repeat today. I said the act of writing will remain. Even from the days of the scratching on the walls in Iraq, in the caves, to various other civilizations that happened where people wrote on a clay tablet or on a papyrus or they wrote on various kinds of other paper that was made, to the digital age, the act of writing remains. Maybe the surfaces and the implements used were changing. But I feel the fountain pen should last for a long, long time. I don't see any other instrument which can replace a fountain pen. One of the most beautiful and the best ever writing instrument that somebody can hold in their hands. So, I appeal to all of you, please carry this message to the next generations and let them also enjoy the ability to write. And the recent research that was done in California, University of California, about the youngsters who lost out on writing for a decade or so in America about say sometime in the 2000s. We found that you know these youngsters who lost out on writing in school are very bad in their memory. Their vocabulary is horrendous because they never wrote much and they don't have much to say, they don't have much to even articulate and I'm scared about this chat GPT and AI which is replicating the human beings, then what's the worth of a human being? Let chat GPT be on one side, let the AI be there. Maybe you can use it as a slave, but I appeal to all the youngsters, don't become a slave of this chat GPT or an AI. Improve your vocabulary, improve your memory and your power of expression because your power of expression makes the biggest difference today. With a lot of competition coming from chat GPT and AI also, I would like to quote, in this world of competition, your first impression should make the best impression and your last impression should leave a lasting impression because you won't get another chance to make a fresh impression. There is no second chance today. First impression makes the best impression and the last impression should leave a lasting impression. I hope whatever Chom had asked and whatever I have had in my mind which I have shared with you will leave a lasting impression for generations to come. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.